electric potentials. In this lab, you will be measuring the electric field between different sets of electrodes in this basin. We have an acoustic oscillator, not that it makes a noise, just the frequency that it does is in the acoustic range, which is going to be putting a voltage difference on our electrodes in this basin. Using a multimeter, you will be able to directly measure the electric potential between those two electrodes using the single probe, and then by switching to the double probe, you'll be able to measure the field lines in the basin. There will be three different configurations of electrodes, each one on one of these pieces of graph paper that will go under the basin, so you can put your electrodes on top of it, and then be able to transcribe all of your measurements onto one of the printouts available at your desk. The oscillator is set so that one electrode will be held at zero volts and the other electrode will be alternating between 10 volts and negative 10 volts at approximately a thousand times a second. We do this so we don't electroplate the electrodes. We won't notice that flipping because we will be using the AC voltage setting on the multimeter which is the wiggly line next to the V, which just gives an absolute value of that measurement. When you are setting the voltage on the acoustic oscillator, the amplitude knob is marked in percent of total amplitude. So you will need to use the multimeter and the single probe to directly measure that voltage and turning it until you get to 10 volts. The acoustic oscillators can overheat if you let them run for too long. So make sure to turn off the acoustic oscillators when you are not taking measurements and before you leave the room. We will be filling the basins with deionized water so that we don't corrode our electrodes. We are only going to be using the supplied deionized water, but if you have too much water, you can empty it out into the sink. Again, to prevent corrosion, we don't want to ever touch any of the copper electrodes with our bare hands. That is why there will be gloves provided. You only need to use a glove if you are touching the electrodes. You do not need to wear gloves during the rest of the lab period. If I may make a suggestion about how you run your lab. Many students find the measurement part of the lab, particularly where you're using the two electrodes to find the field lines are very time consuming because one student insists on taking the measurements and making the markings on the piece of paper. This can result in someone finding the direction of the field line, setting down the probe, making a measurement, and then having to return to the measurements and finding that spot again. What's going to be much more efficient is if one student has the double probe and they call out markings to another student who is drawing them. If you do it that way, you don't need to ever pick up the probe. You can just pick a point and then by compassing around that electrode, you can find your next set of field lines. And then instead of pivoting around the red electrode, you can pivot around the black electrode Find your segment, call out, pivot around the red electrode, call out, pivot along the black electrode, call out, call out, call out. And the measurement process becomes much, much faster. Thank you for watching this video. Here's a fun fact. This is the birthday cake from ENIAC's 70th birthday party. ENIAC the first universal computer built at the University of Pennsylvania Moore School of Electrical Engineering. It was such a computer marvel, it would only take 140,000 of them to store an MP3.